Hi everyone, um, today I just want to talk to you about getting started with online learning. I know that obviously we're in a difficult situation at the moment, so um, I just want to present some strategies, some ideas on how to get started, um, some top three takeaways for uh, teachers who are just setting up to teach their classes online. So I just want to start by saying that I work at Corpus Christi College, I'm um, the Director of Digital Integration and I'm also an English teacher uh, and I've put together um, a remote learning plan with uh, colleagues at work for students and for staff of two sets of agreements um, and essentially they, their students follow the normal schedule at school as best they can from 8.30 till 3.15 and check in with their teacher lesson by lesson um, for 10 minutes or so, so to do a role um, to get their instruction and to go off and create or to, to do their activities. So we kind of um, work into the timetable but also allowing students to have that freedom to, to go off and work by themselves um, whilst being there to support them at the same time. So we use Teams for that, Teams um, video calls primarily, uh, and the Teams functions to set up classes. Uh, and one note as well for students to store their, their work, their learning. Now you can see with the staff agreement as well that often what we have to do in this situation is change some summative assessments, make them more formative assessments, alter the summative assessments where we can um, to suit our current situation with online learning. So we have an LMS as well for sector it's called and we attach all our lessons on there. So with that in mind I just want to talk about getting started with online learning. The three key takeaways I'm going to uh, introduce today are number one keep lessons as simple as possible. Number two, record short videos. And uh, finally, number three, make the most of, of technology. So I just want to um, dig down into this a little bit by starting with the first one and, and setting achievable tasks, manageable tasks, uh, because you have to start thinking differently now you're working remotely. because lessons are um, a lot more difficult to to judge because you can't see the students as easily for example so you have to I guess simplify it and chunk things down um, and make things achievable because students might have you know uh, trouble getting on to teams for example in the first place um, they might have technical issues in with other things on their iPad or whatever so it's just about making it manageable chunking things down having an example from a teacher a live model something for example or ask them to watch a quick clip you've made uh, and then go away and and create or answer some questions um, or make something from what they've learned so it's also good as well to provide students with a, a way to find out more if they want to extend themselves. So links on your LMS um, to other other challenges or other extension activities, um, and also you know if you want to set like a, a project that can it can be a mini project of some kind which can span several lessons because you've got to take uh, yourself into consideration as well and your own well-being so you can't always uh, be planning for every single lesson it could be a, a you know a, a project that spans uh, three or four lessons for example so a very very quick example of how i've written my um lesson on sector we use our LMS. Um, we've got the intention but then very clearly labelled steps and in this case we have a dedicated digital creativity course at our school. This is not an English lesson uh, where students learn the creative skills with their iPad in video, drawing, music and, and um, photography. This is a drawing lesson and um, you can see that I've just said here trace your face um, you know put a picture of your yourself into sketch school reduce the opacity and trace yourself it's always good to have a teacher example uh, this is obviously a self portrait of me um, before I had a shave um, make sure you use color as you can see very simple instructions with links to find out more and tutorials from YouTube so I just want to head into tip number two 
uh, and that is to record short videos. So making short videos for your students to watch of yourself explaining a concept or an idea. Uh, and the beauty about this is if you get into the habit of doing this, um, then you can store them and use them later for flipped lessons when you get back to school. So there's lots of different ways you can do this, but I would definitely um, recommend to record very short videos and not have them uh, too long because the attention span of students nowadays is is getting shorter and shorter. So uh, two to three minutes are the maximum time. Uh, you can make a series as well, so it's not just a one-off video, but it could be part one, part two, part three. Um, and I would recommend to use your own voice and visuals. So that means uh, perhaps use an interactive whiteboard tool to write or draw a diagram, um, to circle or annotate text. So it's actively you participating and been involved in the video. So brings me on to my next point is that experimenting with screen recording tools. Um, as you can see, I'm using one now. It's probably the best one I've found actually, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But um, there are lots and lots of things available. I just want to narrow it down um, in an infographic uh, first. I'll show you this. This is what Daniel Budd and I came up with. So Daniel Budd is Daniel B. Budd on, on Twitter. Please follow him. Um, and we came up with a creating teacher to student videos infographic five top tips and some I've just talked about there and one of which is getting the right length two to three minutes using your voice um, don't just lecture but annotate and label and and play a role in your video and subtitles where possible that's a hard one and you can see some of the tools that we we recommend underneath too which I'll go into in a further detail um, in a second so if you're a beginner, then you know there are some tools that you can use quite easily, um, and they are if you've got a Mac anyway, QuickTime, and you can simply record yourself speaking for one or two minutes uh, and explaining something, and then uploading that video to your class channel or wherever you're going to put it. You can do that on an iOS device as well, so screen record your iPad screen, and then you start to move towards the software, which uh, I mentioned before, Loom, and the one I'm using now, records the screen like this, like I'm doing now. It's such an easy tool to use, uh, and it's fantastic for remote learning. So if you're a heavy user and you're more of an expert, then you might want to experiment with Explain Everything. Explain Everything is uh, free at the moment because of the current situation. Lots of educational tools have been offered for free, and Explain Everything is probably one of the best. Quick screenshot here of how to screen record on your iPad. Um, I'm going to create a PDF which supports this video with lots of links on, and one of the links is from a colleague at work who is actually explaining how to do screen recording on an iPad and then upload into YouTube. So please look out for that link and I'll share the PDF um, when I can. This is the desktop app for Loom, which I'm using now, uh, and it shows quite clearly how you can record the screen and the camera how you can record the screen only or the camera only. As you can see I'm doing the first one now and this is how it looks and you can have your avatar or you can have your live feed image as I'm showing you uh, in the bottom left and you can move that circle as well, you can move it around I just don't want to ruin it right now. So highly recommended, it's also an iPad app as well. Uh, another example is of this um, screen recording tool is, is explain everything. This is again the ex expert one. You can bring lots of different media in to explain everything. That's why it, it's uh, very, very, um, very, very useful in that respect. You can see here in this English example I've brought in a PDF. I've annotated the PDF. You can put pictures in, you can put videos in, you can put web pages in, you can put GIFs in and clip art. You can record as you can see at the bottom there. I've actually started to record my lesson and my annotations. So this is a fantastic tool as well because it's an it's a um, infinite whiteboard, which means that you can zoom right out. And you've got plenty of space. You've got infinite space to work in. So um, fantastic tool for collaboration as well. You can invite other teachers, uh, and I definitely recommend to try it out if you've got the confidence to use it. This is a quick example from my class last year, and they use Explain Everything to annotate and analyze a graphic novel. So you can see this This student has put pages in from the graphic novel and she has annotated 
before she started recording. You can do it as you are recording, you know, it doesn't have to be as polished as this, but you can see how she's done it. It's very impressive. In concentration camps. A close up there. I'm starting to feel human again. Meaning that Vladek is still just... And you can, you can uh, publish it as a video. So brings me on to my last point, number three is making the most of technology. And what I mean by that is that it's the, the best practice is to um, not simply do typical worksheets or questions and set them at home, but really engage your students by trying to transform activities to make them more creative. Remember, if we're thinking about the salmon model, we need to start uh, asking students to create and to uh, transform learning by giving them the opportunities. So I often think about that in terms of creativity. Our school has a vision for learning and luckily for us, one of the pillars is creativity. So we can introduce lots of video tasks, drawing tasks, audio or music or photography tasks, and that's always a good place to start. So quick apps list. I don't know why I've put this here, but there you go. You can download this on the PDF as well. And you can see the creation tools in the middle. I think explain everything is a good creation tool. But so is Keynote and so is Pages too. And Flipgrid, which I'm going to come on to in a second. So one way you can get students to create is for them to uh, create videos. So Clips is a fantastic free app by Apple. You can uh, basically use it to create mini videos, students can insert stickers and posters for title pages. They can um, they can uh, use filters, and it's quite self-explanatory for short videos. They can even make silent movies for inf informational videos and certain topics. So it's very very easy to use. It's free as well. And as you know, iMovie is also an Apple app, and it's for more heavy duty editing. So if you want students to create uh, tutorials or documentary style interviews or anything like that then iMovie is great for b-roll footage as well. So the last thing I want to quickly show you is Flipgrid and you know there's lots and lots of stuff on Twitter on, about Flipgrid. Flipgrid's fantastic to get students uh, voices involved and, and hear their side of things so if you um, want to ask a question they can respond through a video format. Um, I'll quickly sh show you what I mean by that now. So you can see how this is Flipgrid now um, and uh, I've actually put a question out there to my year nine class on um, what their narrative is about. They're writing a story at the minute and I just wanted them to share a one minute video explaining what happens at the beginning, the middle and the end of their narrative. Um, and they respond through a video format like this. The good thing about it as well is um, you can actually get, I'll just pause that, you can actually get uh, up the grading rubric so you can grade their ideas and their performance and give feedback as well and it's a collaborative and, and sh uh, a good way to share good um, good responses with with everyone with each other so that's Flipgrid and again if I can link that into the PDF so you can see how it works for remote learning if you want to be, get a bit more creative with your students then maybe you could introduce them to more creative approaches to representing information like in this case how to save water instead of asking them to do research maybe get them to create an infographic instead and draw it using Keynote or Sketches School. Uh, the Everyone Can Create Guides by Apple are really helpful for this and they, they really guide students through uh, how to do basic infographics and other creative things. For English teachers, I'm I guess in quite a lot of subjects like languages as well, podcasts are actually very good too. Um, you could record an interview with an expert on a certain topic or students could uh, record the introduction to a um, interview with a famous author for example. So GarageBand is fantastic for that and as you can see it's just two tracks uh, and students record their voice and they can also make music for the intro. Based on everyone can create the project guides, um, I've also come up with some extended project ideas. Now there's lots here and these span several lessons, you know, quite quite a few weeks actually. So it might be a good idea to get students to think of uh, an extended project to work on, whether that is um, 
creating a tutorial video or a podcast or maybe it's creating a digital art gallery of portrait pictures um, there's lots and lots of options here for students to to research first because it's based on everyone can create but then also produce something as well some English teachers were asking me as well have you got any um, remote learning resources which might be quite good for English classes so I thought I'd put some cool English resources on here too uh, number one is the uh, create your own adventure or choose your own adventure uh, story this is in keynote and as you can see it's got links and students think of a story title they record um, or write parag a paragraph for each part of the narrative and then they insert path A, path B uh, and think of alternate endings and they can draw each scene as well so it goes to the rising action the climax here you have two pathways and students have to write alternate um, climax parts of the story before coming to the end and the falling action and then finally the ending so there's lots of different alternatives students have to think of and draw and create with that one similarly with the hero's journey it's another narrative structure and creative writing task uh, students think of what their story entails in terms of how it starts with the ordinary world the protagonist is called to action there's a box on the right to draw in as well so students can draw each part of the process um, and as you can see there are also some choose your own elements in here as well path A and path B um, which students can create so it's a fantastic opportunity for them to get creative and to think outside the box uh, digitally you can ask students to map out as well a narrative using Keynote, uh, in this case Animal Farm with symbols. Remember if we um, look at online best practice when it comes to learning, often it's spoken that dual coding is, is key to learning. So that means putting pictures, putting visuals and words together for students to remember concepts and ideas. So it's good for them to think of icons and shapes to use for different parts of a narrative. Similarly with this one, this is Romeo and Juliet, and through the shapes in Keynote, um, they summarize what happens at each stage of the plot. So it could give them a blank version of this, or partially filled in, and they have to create um, symbols to represent the events in the text. Last one is blackout poetry, um, and students can create their own poems by uh, blacking out most of the text and choosing some words to keep. That's the finished version. This is how it starts. They circle the words to start with. This is from the text. They colour the rest in on their iPad. I think this is in Keynote. And as you can see then, then just go ahead and decorate the rest of it with the image of Frankenstein, how the words link together before finally having the finished product. So I just want to quickly summarize what we've talked about today. We've done a lot in terms of um, you know, keeping it simple. We've talked about a lesson plan, making things uh, simplistic, chunking it down, maybe setting a series of lessons or extended projects. Number two, uh, recording short videos that you can keep for later for flipped learning reasons, but also just to engage students and to explain a concept. And also making the most of technologies. How can you offer more creative tasks, more um, inspirational tasks, which will engage students and, and get them to, or challenge them to create something and produce something new. So thank you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this video and uh, hopefully see you again.